The world has evolved over billions of years. Humans have only walked the earth for around 200,000 years, and from then to now, we have all needed food to stay alive. Humans have changed a lot in the time that we've been living and eating, and so has our meals. Stay tuned, because in today's video, we're talking about 15 foods that originally looked totally different. Let us know if your favorite snacks are on the list. Don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to The Supreme, and click the notification bell for more lit content. Let's get rolling. Number 15. Watermelon. If you think watermelon seeds are a bit of a bummer, just wait until you see what a watermelon looked like in the 1600s. Watermelons are native to West Africa and come from a flowering plant. Evidence of watermelon cultivation along the River Nile and Nile Valley have been found dating back to the 2nd century BCE. Watermelon seeds have been found in the tomb of Pharaoh Tutankhamun. By the 7th century, watermelons were being cultivated in India, and by the 10th century, they had reached China and Spain. By the 1600s, they were making their way into European gardens. Giovanni Stanchi and Albert Eckhout show watermelons as they were circa 400 years ago, and they look pretty different than they do today. Earlier forms of the fruit show them as having bigger seeds and less juicy red flesh. The red-fleshed watermelons we see today have come as a result of careful cultivation. Humans selectively bred the fruit to encourage smaller seeds and less rind. If you're shocked at that transformation, think about how the fruit will look 400 years from right now. In Japan, square and triangle watermelons are already a thing. So what else is possible? Number 14. Wild banana. Did you know that we can trace banana cultivation back 7,000 years? Some think they were grown for consumption as early as 10,000 years ago. Wild bananas are native to what is now Papua New Guinea. Their references to bananas in Buddhist scripture as far back as 600 BC. It's thought that bananas were introduced to Africa 2,500 years ago and then traded across coastal regions in the Indian Ocean from the 5th century. Bananas arrived in the Americas in the 1600s and Australia in the 1800s. The fruit we know today come from two wild species, Musa acuminata and Musa balbiciana. Bananas are related to the plantain, a type of cooking banana. The two fruits are similar, but bananas are generally softer, sweeter, and less starchy. Early bananas were filled with hard seeds, but we've bred them to prioritize the soft, edible flesh. These days, the most popular banana is the Cavendish variety, but did you know that our ancestors in the early 1900s were eating Gros Michel bananas, which were said to be creamier and sweeter? The Gros Michel died out as a result of the Panama disease and growers had to scramble to find a fair alternative. Some people are worried that the Cavendish will become susceptible to disease one day too. A world without bananas? Can you even imagine? Number 13. Proto Carrot. When I was a kid, I really didn't like carrots, but as an adult, my taste buds have changed, and I can enjoy one for what it is. When I say carrot, you guys imagine a bright orange vegetable, right? Well, it turns out that the root vegetable is only predominantly orange because of a historic Dutch war victory against the Spanish. Wild carrots are believed to have originated from Central Asia and originally had seeds and aromatic leaves. Carrot seeds have been found in Switzerland and South Germany dating back to 2000 to 3000 BC. Root carrots began popping up in Afghanistan around the 8th century and ancient ancient carrots were a lot less sweet. So here's a shocking carrot fact. They come in a lot of different colors. OG carrots can be black, purple, red, yellow, white, and even orange. You can still buy different color carrots today, although they're a lot less popular and not widely distributed. The reason that orange carrots are the most popular variety is because of William Prince of Orange, a Dutchman known as the leader of the Dutch revolt against Spain that sparked the 80 Years' War. Eventually, the sweeter flavor was also selectively bred through the vegetable, making them better tasting. A little bonus fact for you, carrots don't help you see in the dark, but they could turn your skin a faint orange if you overconsume them. Number 12. Corn. Corn has been at the heart of agriculture for 9,000 years or more and can be traced back to the Teosinti plant and maize plant. 
Corn was first domesticated in 7000 BC and was found only in southern Mexico. Back then, maize corn was just one inch long and there was only one per plant. It seems that it took a lot more effort to peel. Kernels were very, very hard and the vegetables tasted like raw dry potato. Later, the plant was hydrodized to create something a little more like what we know today, which is 1,000 times larger than its ancestor. Back then, corn was just 1.9% sugar, whereas today, it's 6.6% and much sweeter. The crop became way more palatable when European invaders started cultivating it. They also took the crop back to Europe, where it's now widely harvested. Number 11. Ancestor Apples Apples are so great, aren't they? I mean, I know they're a pretty regular fruit, but I'm gonna go out there and say that they're a little underrated. Apples are the perfect healthy snack, and they can also be used to make apple pie, which is one of the all-time best desserts. And you can't have cider without apples. I always think of apples as being American because they're a big part of our culture, but actually European colonists brought the fruits over. Apples have been grown for thousands of years in Asia and Europe, and are thought to have originated in the Tian Shan Mountains of Kazakhstan. The original apple forests are thought to still exist. Original apples would have been a mix of green and red and were first noted in around 4000 BCE. Apples spread across the world along the Silk Road and they became the perfect fruit for humans as they are rich in nutrients and they travel very well. These days, there are 7,500 known types of apple which have been selectively bred by humans to have different colors, textures, and flavors. Number 10. Marshmallow Did you know that marshmallows originally came from plants with pink flowers? The mallow plant is an herb native to Europe, North Africa and Asia and grows in damp marshy areas. Makes sense. Early marshmallows were consumed as a sweet confectionery treat by the Egyptians in 2000 BCE. The root of the plant was boiled and pulped with honey, but it was an exclusive candy saved only for royalty and members of extreme high society. Marshmallow flowers made their way to France where confectioners whipped the sap from the mallow root and poured it into a fluffy candy mold. Eventually, by the 1800s, candy makers began whipping the root with sugar, water, and egg whites. The mallow root was eventually replaced with gelatin, swapping flower roots for crushed bones. Until the 1950s, marshmallows were long ropes until they were manufactured in the United States and Alex Dumak patented the marshmallow making process. What's crazy is that marshmallows have only looked like we know them today since the 50s, but Girl Scouts have been making s'mores since 1927. Uh, I love s'mores. Number 9. Eggplant Eggplants, or aubergines as they're also known as, are thought to have originated in India or Africa. These days, wild eggplants still grow in India. Imagine eggplant picking. <laughs> That'd be kind of fun. Eggplants made their way across the Mediterranean, and in the 12th century, they were readily grown in Spain. I guess I kind of made that sound like they just packed a suitcase and started traveling on their own account. Obviously, it was hungry humans who spread them around, but interestingly, eggplants were thought to be poisonous because they're related to deadly nightshade plants. Although the fruit itself won't harm you, the flowers and leaves are poisonous. That being said, in Italian and Egyptian folklore, it said that eggplants make people crazy. Originally, the fruit was first recorded as being white and were a lot smaller, which is how it got its name of eggplant. You can still find white eggplants today, although the deep purple color is most commonly in the West. Primitive eggplants had spines and were much shorter fruits. The fruit we know today is a result of selective breeding. Number 8. Toxic Cucumber Cucumbers come from South Asia, although North America is also home to the wild cucumber, which isn't the same thing. The first cultivated cucumbers are noted to have been grown in India, with records of the vegetable being grown in France and in the 9th century, England in the 14th century, and North America in the mid-16th century. Romans are said to have been particularly fond of them. The Asian cucumber has changed a little from the cuke we eat on plates today. They were lumpier and had larger seeds. Selective breeding has led them to become smoother and with softer, smaller seeds. North American wild cucumber, on the other hand, is an aggressive and invasive plant that will cause damage to trees and shrubs. You can't eat these cucumbers. They don't taste good at all. 
Here's a quick crazy fact that I learned about cucumbers today. Apparently, in the early eras, women would wear cucumbers around their waist in order to increase their chances of conceiving a child. Hmm, that's interesting. Number 7. The Original Cabbage Cabbage may not sound that exciting, but it has a pretty rich history. Cabbage dates back to at least 1000 BC, and it's thought that varieties grew in Asia and Europe separately. The ancient Greeks were known to cultivate cabbage, and it was also a known component of Roman medicine, with cabbage used to cure headaches, gout, and symptoms of light poisoning. In European cuisine, cabbage was a staple throughout the Middle Ages, although generally speaking, it was eaten by poorer members of society because it was cheap and readily available. From artistic depictions in the 15th century, cabbages appear very large and leafy. They were tight balls of leaves and needed to be cut finely and boiled for a long time. It's thought that the Savoy cabbage that we know today was cultivated sometime in the 1700s. Did you know that these days China is the largest producer of cabbage, but Russia is the biggest consumer? Cabbage facts. Don't say I didn't teach you anything. Number 6. Wild Avocado it's thought that avocados originated in Mexico, which would make sense as they're still a large part of Mexican cuisine and culture. These days, Mexico produces 34% of the world's supply of avocados. There's also some historical speculation that separate domestications cropped up in Guatemala in West Indian. According to fossil evidence, the species we know today may have had ancestors that date back millions of years. The first fossilized avocado pit dates back 9,000 years, and we know that the North Chico civilization in Peru was eating avocados 3,200 years ago. Spain acquired its first avocado in the 1600s, and it wasn't introduced to Florida, Hawaii, and California until the mid-1800s. In California, the fruit used to be called alligator pear, and I kind of like that name better. The ripeness window is so small. Ancient avocados were thought to be just bigger than acorn-sized and with disproportionately big stones. Humans have cultivated avocados to be bigger with a higher flesh to stone ratio, although I still think avocados are difficult. Avocados are continuing to evolve. Recently, seedless avocados made their way into stores, and not only does that fruit not have a big stone, you can also apparently eat the skin. Now that's crazy. Number five, mincemeat. Mincemeat is weird and confusing. As an American, I thought that minced meat was like ground beef or something like that, but British people call their ground meat mince. So when I heard a British person talking about a mince meat pie, I assumed it was a meat pie. But I know some Europeans do. I'm a sweet pie guy myself, so I was surprised to find out that mince meat in the UK is actually a sweet thing. It's like loads of fruit mushed together. The sweet pie is eaten at Christmas. Although it turns out that historically, mince meat did use to actually be meat meat. But now I'm totally confused and my head kind of hurts. Shakespeare mentioned mince meat in Hamlet. And back then, the recipe called for pork, stewed bird, rabbit, eggs, cheese, saffron, fruits, and salt, all cooked into a pie shell. The rich dish would be eaten during celebrations. The treats were banned by the joyless ruler of Britain in the 1600s, but they made a comeback in the Victorian era, although this was when chefs dropped the meat, with palates no longer primed for a mix of sweet and savory, which I kinda get. Hawaiian pizza is always divisive. Since the late 1800s, mincemeat pies have been firmly back on the menu in the UK, and British people eat them at Christmas, although they're strictly meat-free these days. Okay, Britain, you've officially confused me with your quirkiness. Number four, strawberries. I love strawberries. They're a lot of people's favorite fruits. I love strawberry flavor, and sometimes I think of strawberries as nature's candy. Strawberries are a member of the rose family, which has come as news to me. Strawberries come from the Americas, and native tribes picked and ate them wild. The original strawberries come from Virginia and Chile. Shockingly, people didn't begin to cultivate strawberries until the plant was transported to Europe during the Renaissance. It's thought that strawberries got their name from being sold as treat items in open markets, skewered and ready to eat on a skewer. Strawberries became a delicacy in Europe, with today's classic dish of strawberries and cream first debuting in the court of King Henry VIII. Over the years, 
horticulturalists figured out how to cultivate them asexually. Ancient strawberries were said to be much spikier and smaller, with human intervention meaning we cultivated smoother, juicier fruits. Number 3. Peaches Peaches were first cultivated in 6000 BCE in the Zhejiang province of China and have been mentioned in Chinese literature since as early as 1000 BCE. Some people claim that Alexander the Great introduced the peach to Europe after conquering the Persians, which may or may not be true. It was eventually brought over to the Americas in the 16th century by Spanish invaders. Until the 19th century, a peach was a delicacy in the UK and France. So what did peaches look like back then? It seems that in circa 4000 BCE, peaches were cherry-sized, were 36% stone, and had waxy skin and tasted a little salty. A bit like a lentil. What? That sounds crazy. Today's fleshier peaches are around 64 times bigger than their ancestors. Our modern peaches are said to be 27% juicier and 4% sweeter. I don't know how we can say that for sure though. Cherry-sized peaches would be so strange. Although maybe they'd be easier to eat. I never eat a peach outside the comfort of my own home because that juice splatters everywhere and it can be kind of savage. Number 2. Heritage Tomatoes Heritage tomatoes come in all shapes and sizes and most of them don't look anything like the modern tomatoes you and I are familiar with. They come in colors ranging from blank to pink to green. Some are tiny and others the size of your fist. The reason that many of these types of tomatoes fell out of fashion was because today's tomatoes are said to be more disease resistant and commercially viable. Still. These heritage tomatoes can be found and growers say they can have exciting twists on the standard tomato taste that you're used to. Examples include the Cherokee Purple, or said to go well in a salad. Anna Romaines have a more tart flavor while Lillian's Yellow Heirlooms are said to be so meaty they're almost solid. These varieties come from all over the world and at one time they'd have to be as diverse as the people growing them. Although the name Heritage and their inclusion on this list would suggest these varieties are very much a thing of the past, and that may not be the case. Some groups are advocating for a return to growing more heritage tomatoes which have evolved to be able to grow in environments all over the world. More heritage tomatoes being grown would mean less of a disaster if climate change or disease began to affect the common variety we're familiar with. Perhaps heritage tomatoes are our future after all. Number 1. Bacon Unlike many of the other items on our list, you can't grow bacon. I'm sure some of you will be disappointed to hear that. The fact that bacon comes from pigs means that we need to compare modern pigs to historic ones in order to see how this food has changed. Pigs were domesticated about 11,000 years ago from wild boars. In order to know what bacon would have tasted like back then, we need a wild boar. Fortunately, wild boars do exist in many parts of the world and are eaten by people to this day. The meat is darker and has a strong, nutty flavor, which is distinct from the pork that most people are familiar with. The main reasons it tastes different to the meat of domesticated pigs are diet and exercise. Roaming wild boars are a lot more active than the pigs enclosed on farms. This increased exercise alters the composition of their muscle and fat, which results in a more protein-rich meat and is a noticeably different tasting one to that of pork that most of the world knows. If this sounds appealing, keep an eye out for your local diner selling wild boar bacon and eggs. That's our list. I've got to admit, I'm real hungry right now. What did you think about today's video? What food transformation do you think has been the most notable? And what do you guys love eating? Let me know down in the comments. I think the biggest transformation has to be the marshmallows. They used to be flowers and roots, and now they're little squidgy sweet candy pillows made from bones. Weird. I could still go for a s'more though. I know they aren't around to hear it, but I want to thank our ancestors for cultivating all of these delicious foods that we know and love today. Also, imagine how awesome food is going to taste in another couple hundred years. By the 30th century, we'll have totally nailed avocados, and British mincemeat will probably have meat in it again.